safety before we get going. It's pretty standard stuff, you know, stay seated. Uh, Armin's a fantastic driver, but we have big potholes in Boston and big windows on the duck, and those don't match very well. Go ahead, Arlene. Um, also, no smoking. It's kind of bad for you. Also, it's kind of dangerous on a duck. I have a fire extinguisher. If you lit light up, I'm going to put you out. <laughs> and don't put your arms far out the windows. And elbow's fine. Elbow's fine. Um, but don't reach out. I know the trees are tempting, but sometimes they like to hit back. Also, we get kind of close to some of the other vehicles on the road. Just be safe. It is a narrated tour, so do ask me. Please respect each other. Try not to be too loud or talk on your cell phones. And let's have fun. We're going on a duck tour. So I am Justine Time. I am a time traveler, or at least I'm supposed to be. There I was, flitting back and forth from century to century when my time machine broke, leaving me stranded here in 21st century Boston. Not that there's anything wrong with that, it's just, you know, the scientists in Cambridge, I probably shouldn't tell you how close they are to coming up with time travel. Anyway, I need to fix my time machine, so I've enlisted the help of the quack scientists here at Boston Duck Tours to fix it for me, and in exchange, I'm giving history tours. I mean, how hard, how hard can it be? I was there, right? Now, this duck is my time machine. While well, it moves great through physical space, it stopped moving through time. Uh, it's not connecting to the time stream, but I had this idea. I think you guys might be able to actually help me fix my time machine. See, if we think all about history and we talk all about history, then we might just be able to jumpstart the time engine and connect back to the time stream. So if you guys have any questions about Boston history, please feel free to raise your hand and let me know. I'd be happy to answer any questions you have to have, happen to have about Boston, the sites, or history, etc. Um, and what a city to talk about Boston history. I mean, this is a city full of freedom, birthplace of the American Revolution, a leader in all sorts of civil rights activities, including the abolitionist movement. It's a city of firsts, the first lighthouse in the United States, the first sewing machine, even the first jelly bean factory. And it's a city of fun. I mean, what could be more fun than riding a duck with a time traveler, right? So the other thing we need to be aware of is quacking. Something about turning my time machine into a duck, people like to quack at us. And we have to be prepared to quack back. Of course, it doesn't work if we quack one at a time, all willy-nilly. We need to quack together. And that way we can channel the quacking energy back into the time engine, back to the time stream. That will be our cue, time stream. So when I say time stream, I need everybody to say quack, quack. Do you think we can do that? You're already on a duck. You already look ridiculous. May as well have fun with it, right? All right, here we go, on my cue, time stream. All right, like 85, 90% of us are having fun. We'll try to bring the rest of you along as we go. So if we see another duck, obviously we can quack at them. Or if we see somebody on the sidewalk who looks like they're having a crummy day and we cheer them up, we can get them a quack. If somebody quacks at us, and uh, we aren't going, you know, driving by and leave them on the sidewalk behind us or I'm not in the middle of a story and we have time to react and uh, I can take a pause, we can give them a quack too. So we'll have fun with that. Now, before we get too far into Boston history, I am curious about you guys. Where is everybody coming from? Okay, just where are you from, sure. From Montreal, awesome. And you also had your hand up? What was that? San Diego. San Diego, cool. You don't actually have to raise your hand for this. You can yell it out, too. What was that? New Zealand. Oh, New Zealand. No, no, New York City. Oh, New York City. Oh, okay. Cool. Still cool. Not as far. Um, so, New York City. Where else? Vancouver. What was that? Vancouver. Vancouver. Nice. So, a few more. Oh, but the Montrealians aren't too excited about that. <laughs> Um, besides Canada, do we have any from uh, anybody else from outside the country? Rhode Island. <laughs> Where are you guys from? <laughs> Hong Kong? Cool. And you guys said you're from Rhode Island? Cool. Welcome. Uh, do I have any locals on board? Where are you guys from? Brookline. Cool. Welcome. So I, but that, but that means I can't make anything up. I try, I try not to anyway, of course. Awesome. Anybody else that I miss that wants to share? Welcome everybody from near and far to Boston. So the land now known as Boston was originally called Shaman. That roughly translates to land of living waters or land of many waters. It's what the Native Americans called it. And there's a lot of water. We're on the coast. It makes sense. But there was even more water at one point. Originally, this was a tiny peninsula. Only about
about a mile and a half square, surrounded almost entirely by water, with just a little sandbar, a land bridge, really, connecting it to the mainland. When the Puritans showed up from England, that was what was here. Uh, it was just a little peninsula, practically an island. At a high tide, it would become an island as the land bridge flooded. And so over the years, as more and more people joined the Puritans and uh, their numbers grew, eventually they ran out of space. So they started pushing all the hills into the water to make more land and eventually made the Boston that we have today. Nowadays, about 60% of Boston is made of filled in land or land that used to be water or marshland. 60%. Anybody know what the name of this neighborhood is, for example? It's called the Back Bay. And that's a weird name for a neighborhood, Back Bay, but that's exactly what this was. Up until the middle of the 1800s, this literally was a bay until it was filled in, which is pretty remarkable. Now we're going to talk about the Back Bay much later on in the tour. Um, I want to talk about some of the sites we're coming up to. For example, as we go over this bridge over the highway, we are traveling over Interstate 90 or I-90 um, or uh, the Mass Pike. I-90 is the longest highway in the country. Interstate 90 starts here in Massachusetts and goes all the way out to Seattle, Washington. You can travel from here on I-90 all the way to the West Coast. And that's the cars that are traveling underneath us. We can only see the inbound traffic. The outbound is underneath uh, on the other side. There's also a beautiful fire station ahead of us. This old fire station was built before the modern fire engines existed, back when they only had horse-drawn fire carts. So when uh, they actually have the stables around that the horses would have been kept in, there's no horses there any longer, but they still have stables. Is that a question or a stretch? Stretch is fine, that's okay. Um, if it's a question, I just want to know so I can answer it. Um, but this, uh, one of the really cool facts about this is when they got the modern fire engines, the doors were too short. They couldn't fit under the doorway. So what did they do? Really kind of imp impressive uh, solution. They lowered the floors. They dug down at the bottom, and that way the modern fire trucks can fit in the doors. And this is one of the oldest fire stations in Boston. Um, it, it's a beautiful old building, Richardsonian Romanesque style architecture fit that used to be a police station has become an architectural college today and uh, part of the police station that's next door has turned into a restaurant we do a great job here in Boston of repurposing old buildings and keeping them uh, you know usually putting restaurants in them is, is often a common uh, common function there we go green light we can pass by get a closer view of the beautiful old building as we turn on to Boylston Street So, Boylston Street is where a big event happens every single April. Does anybody know what it is? The marathon, the Boston Marathon, the oldest annual marathon in the whole world. The Boston Marathon started in 1897, and it is still around today. Uh, this year was the 123rd running, oldest annual marathon in the world. The first year, they only had 15 runners, only 10 of whom finished. Now, it caps at 30,000, which is amazing. One of the other big changes, they didn't used to have women in the marathon. There used to be this ridiculous belief that women's bodies couldn't withstand endurance sports. Come on, women couldn't do endurance. What about labor? 